Hey, Mr. Z, long hey, time no Mr. see. Ben, how are you? It's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah, we've had a couple of weeks here now with no videos, getting mm -hmm. ready for that midterm. Yep. But it's time for some uh, some more videos starting out with economic geology. All right. I, I love this stuff. I watch it every Friday night on those uh, gold mining shows. That's right. Gold Rush just started, and then we've got this new one called uh, Jungle, Jungle, gold. Jungle, mm -hmm. Jungle Gold. So a lot of cool stuff going on there. And we're going to be referencing that, uh, that show quite a bit in class because they talk about a lot of important things. And economic geology, probably one of the more important aspects of geology in terms of, like, our contribution to society as geologists, right? Definitely. Because we depend on a lot of things that come from the earth, and uh, if we didn't know where it was or how to find it, we'd waste a lot of time and a lot of money. That's exactly right? it. So we can uh, talk about how things were formed and and um, everything about economic geology through this entire segment, which is uh, is going to be a long one, I think. Well, but I'm excited, right. though. Yeah, I am too. Let's see what we got. We've got some learning targets. Um, one of the sayings that they have is, if it can't be farmed, it's got to be mined. Like what you said, we take things from the earth, things that we need. As geologists, we can tell where to find those things, and those are things that we need to, to, to make our world the way that it is. Yeah, and if we just think something really simple, like our classroom, right? Mm -hmm. If we look at all the cabinets are made out of wood, so that's obviously farmed, mm -hmm. right? But everything that isn't, I guess, had to come from the ground somewhere. Definitely, yeah. And then there were other things that were used to help produce that that also came from the ground. Right. So uh, that was uh, mined by somebody. So a lot of stuff, a lot of things that probably uh, we don't really think about or at least take for granted every time. So we should be able to determine how minerals are actually used in society like that, making yeah, things. Yeah, definitely. Well, let's see what we've got. All right. All right, so the big picture is sustainability and meeting society's needs. So what we're going to talk about, and this is kind of like an extension of the learning targets, are um, what is sustainability, what are ores, what are ores used for, uh, ores uh, categorized by type of formation, and then limitations and concerns. And this is almost what we're going to talk about through the entire like four segments of this of this um, of economic geology. So we've got some words we're going to be learning, like sustainability, kind of a balance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, ores that have to do with um, the the metals themselves and the and the uh, and the and the rock. So let's see what we've got coming up here. All right, so we do have a video uh, that is um, a video in the video mm -hmm. about sustainability. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just play this for you right here in the slideshow. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Sustainability means that things can keep going, can sustain themselves, can continue into the future and go on forever. From a human perspective, sustainability for our planet means that it can continue to do what it was designed to do. Provide fresh air, clean water, produce food, and allow us all to have a high quality of life forever. Unsustainability means that it cannot, and that is where we are now. Twenty years ago, scientists in Sweden developed a definition for sustainability with four basic principles. These can be seen as the care instructions for our planet. If we follow them, it is good for our planet. And because we are part of the system that is our planet, it's good for us too. The care instructions are as follows. Reduce our dependence on fossil fuels and heavy metals. Reduce our dependence on synthetic chemicals that persist in nature. Reduce our destruction of nature. Ensure we are not stopping people globally from meeting their needs. Demand for the Earth's services, clean air, water, food, increases as the population increases and living standards rise. But the Earth's ability to provide these services is declining because of the way we're living. In our search for prosperity, growth and success, we are destroying the system that we as humans are completely dependent upon. Nature. We humans have become a threat to our own way of life. The earth is a system and everything is connected. Society, environment and economy. To live sustainably, we need to follow the four care instructions and apply them to everything we do at home and at work. If we can follow these care instructions, we can work together to be sustainable. We will all have a better quality of life. We'll waste less, we'll pollute less, and we'll create more things we value in society, while improving our planet's chances of providing us with the very things we need to survive. All right, so that was actually a really good video on sustainability, don't mm -hmm. you think? Yeah, I think the main ideas they take away from it is 
we're on the earth, we're part of the earth, and so if we're going to take something from the earth, we have to make sure that we don't adversely affect everything that's associated with it. Yeah, and we can see a lot of that as a part of, uh, like just in our classroom, with like a recycling bin, right? Exactly. And then, you know, like 10 years ago, maybe that wasn't around, or 15 years ago wasn't around in our classrooms. Just to have that kind of idea that we have to kind of be responsible people in terms of our environment and what we use and how we use it. Okay, mm -hmm. so when we go over this, if we throw a few extra words in here that aren't on their slides, they should write a few of that. Yeah, of that definitely. Down. So we are still writing stuff down, definitely. Mr. Z, what is an ore? Well, an ore is a metalliferous mineral or aggregate of a metalliferous mineral mixed with gang, which can be extracted uh, at a profit. Okay. So what does that mean in English terms? Okay. Well, when we were doing um, the segment um, before with the minerals, the kids scratched something, and, and the the you had an ore like copper, and it was stuck in a bunch of like quartz or some other... Um, an aggregate or a mixture of other stuff. Mm -hmm. So the gang would be if you took the copper out of this like rock, sure. the stuff that's worth the most money, the stuff you're after, mm -hmm. that's the copper ore. And yeah. the gang would be the quartz or the other minerals that it's connected to, an aggregate of minerals that it's stuck to that doesn't have an economic value to it. So yeah. gang is the the stuff that you remove, so the, the good stuff, the ore comes out, and the gang um, kind of goes over there. Yeah, got it. And there's a lot of different processes for trying to get that ore out, all right? And, uh, and basically, it's just the stuff that's mixed in with other rocks that mm -hmm. we just want, and we need to get it out somehow. And the profit is, if you can get the gang and the ore separated cheaply enough, and then get rid of the gang and keep the ore. Yeah, and if it's not profitable, mm -hmm. or if it's too expensive to get mm -hmm. it out, then it's typically not done because that's kind of like uh, like an energy negative. If we have to spend more energy to get out that ore than what we get, then it's not really feasible to do. Right. All right. Ooh, we got a, like a pyramid here. So yeah, that's a huge list, Mr. Mm -hmm. So these are all things that, um, that it's a world primary production of minerals and energy resources. So these are things that we get out of the ground. Uh -huh. um, this would be the things that um, we're producing, like the minerals we're producing, and as you get near the top, there's what, less of them then? Do yeah. You, do you think there'd be value with change as you go up towards the top? Yeah, well I would think that things like sand and gravel, that's all the way down here on the bottom, mm -hmm. right? It seems like it's pretty abundant, mm -hmm. uh, so um, it's probably pretty cheap, right? Mm -hmm. But then if I compare that to diamonds, mm -hmm. right, which if I look over here on the left, is like any precious or semi-precious stone, there's not a whole lot of them, right? So I would think they'd be pretty expensive. So the gist of this slide they should get is these are all things that we take from the earth, they're resources that we need. Mm -hmm. Now some, like here are the big ones, these would be things that we need and there's a lot of it, maybe it's easy to get. Mm -hmm. The ones at the top, those, um, those, if they were easy to get, they would be really big. Yeah. So maybe they're not as easy to get, but they're very valuable. Yeah, or so, as plentiful. Right. Yeah, as well. Okay. So that's a big list. That is a big list. So we've got yellow is industrial mineral. So anything that's yellow, these are things like gypsum board, sulfur, things that, um, that we're using in industry to, uh -huh. to make things. And then we've got uh, precious metals and gemstones, and uh, we can see a lot of those up there, but then, oh yeah, they're just all the way up on the top, because these are still kind of greenish color. And then we've right. got fuel, like we've got uranium up there, and then some um, fuel sources down here. Mm -hmm. So the majority of our fuel comes from here, and I guess that makes sense, because this is where you know we're spending a lot of money to produce this yeah and we use this a lot obviously mm -hmm. natural gas petroleum mm -hmm. uh, in everyday life for the most part and then the last one there is our metals uh, I can't really read that second word. well it looks like metals that we use for a variety of other um, purposes yeah So why are ore deposits and uh, rare and valuable? Um, so if we're looking at aluminum, uh -huh. typically it sounds like it's about 8.2% abundant in the crust. Okay. So if you go out and dig a hole, just about anywhere, that's average what you would get. But you're not going to make any money unless it's basically, what, about 30%? Okay. 
So there might be places, as a geologist, we would know to look where aluminum might have been deposited a long time ago. Yeah, because remember, these are ores, so they're mixed in with other rocks, mm -hmm. right? So if we take a rock and it's only 8% of it is the aluminum inside that rock, then it's, we're spending a lot of money to try to separate the ore from the gang or that waste material. And if it's only for this little bit of aluminum, then it's not economically feasible to do. We're just wasting money. So we want to get it to where we have 30% of that rock is aluminum, then we can continue with that same process to get just more aluminum out. So we want to have that, um, that much aluminum in there. And that's the same with, with all of these different um, metals that we have listed here. And I think this is going to go into that next section where they talk about where we can actually find as geologists where to go looking for things that are really enriched. Yeah, and we can talk about that with that TV show too, mm -hmm. right, with Gold Rush. I mean, they spend a ton of time and use a lot of resources just mm -hmm. to get ounces of gold, right? Just small, small parts. So we can parts see gold, million. yeah, right over here. Uh, yeah, parts four, per billion. four parts per billion. So we spend a lot of money and a lot of time to get the gold, but the gold is valuable. All right, so it actually ends up being an economic positive there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've got a line here, and this line is a very, um, like a tipping point line, right? Okay, yeah. So anything above the line, these would be things that we would love to have, right? So these would be things that um, are extremely valuable. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, well, we can see the crustal abundance, so we can go back to that percentage from the last slide, and we can see that something like iron is really really abundant mm -hmm. like right over there and then we can look over here and compare it to gold we were just talking about for that uh, tv show mm -hmm. and that's not very abundant at all it's pretty rare right and but we're looking at tons produced in 1992. so um, you know you can get an idea of the what we're producing um, what's important to us what's um, the most valuable resources those uh -huh. things over the top those are the things that that's going to give you what, more bang for your buck. Those are yeah. the um, those are the things that um, we're. These are the resources we're shooting for a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Common ores and their uses. This slide. Um, this would be one that we're probably going to break out in class and, and yeah. look at a lot more in detail. So you know, at this point, I think get an overview of, of what's on there, but. Um, you know, it's, this is just filled with those um, quick mineral resources and facts. It says, what do you use that is mineral based? So it gets back to yeah. our question that we already had is, what are minerals used to make? Yeah, and they can click on this from here as well. So you can go ahead and click on this if you want to go ahead and explore now if you have some time. Uh, but we are going to be doing it in class. Mm -hmm. um, and it brings up a lot of different things too, about, especially about, about jobs and what that means too. So there's a lot of other impacts. Um, that it has on society overall as a whole. Definitely. So common ores and their uses. So mastery check. So visit the web page, um, skim the top 40, and choose eight to summarize. So they're looking at um, basically the different ores. Sure. So go through the whole list. I wouldn't pick what the first you know eight or something like that. Pick ones that somehow you think are kind of interesting uh -huh. um, and choose eight and you're going to summarize what the, the um, what is the common ore and what are the uses how do we use them information that's important and, and relevant. Yeah exactly. All right and that is the uh, end of the first segment. Excellent. All right thanks a lot Mr. Ben.